In this example, we're asked to make this differential equation given here for small amplitude vibrations of a simple beam dimensionless. And the way we'll approach it is we'll want to make the y and the x positions, that's the vertical and horizontal position, and the time dimensionless using the other parameters given in the equation. So let's go ahead and write down what the dimensions are for each of these quantities. So the dimensions of y will be length. Dimensions of x, of course, will be length. Dimensions of time will be time. And then the dimensions of rho, which is the density of the material, will be mass over length cubed. Dimensions of A, which is the cross-sectional area of the beam, that'll be length squared. Dimensions of E, which is the elastic modulus or Young's modulus of the material, that's like a force per length squared. That's like a, a has the same dimensions as pressure which in terms of mass length over time, that'll be mass length over time squared times one over length squared. So it'll be mass over length times squared. And then the area moment of inertia I for the beam will be length to the fourth, I believe that is, yeah. yeah so that should be length to the fourth. Okay, so let's go ahead and make this equation um, dimensionless, I mean, make the, the, the various terms dimensionless. Let's choose for repeating variables. Let's choose the density because it has a mass, cross-sectional area um, because it has an L, and the elastic modulus because that has a time in there. So our repeating variables will be, you said, rho, A, and E. Again, because they have mass, length, and time in there. And the reason I want to choose three of those is because if you look through this set of variables here, you'll see that we certainly need a, a length by itself. We'll need a time for sure, and we'll need a mass. And then the area and the moment of inertia and the elastic modulus, all those quantities are just repeated. So I'll need, I have three reference dimensions, so I'll need three repeating variables. So let's go ahead and make the non-repeating variables dimensionless using the repeating variables. So, for example, y, to make that dimensionless, I'm going to call it y star, that would be made dimensionless by dividing through by the square root of the area. Right? So the numerator would be length, the denominator would be length squared, but you square root it. So it would just be length over length. So that would make that dimensionless. And we can do the same thing for the x. To make a dimensionless x quantity, it's just x divided by the square root of the area. Again, that'll be like a that'll be like a length over a length. Okay, now let's move on to the dimensionless time. So to make to make the time dimensionless, what we would do is you see that the quantity in our repeating variables that involves time is the elastic modulus. So I'd certainly want to um, multiply the time by the square root of the elastic modulus because that'll give me a time in the denominator. It'll get rid of the time squared and just make it a time in the denominator. So I want to multiply by the square root of the elastic modulus. So that'll be like time times mass to the one half, length to the one half times t. So the t's will cancel out. Then to get rid of the mass, I'll want to divide through by the square root of the density because then I'll have a length to the three halves in the numerator and the mass to the one half in the denominator, dividing through by the density. So that gets rid of the, the masses. And then you see I have left over an, an L to the three halves in the numerator and L to the one half in the denominator. So that's just like having an L in the numerator. So there, what I'll want to do is divide through by the square root of the area, because that'll be one over L. And that'll get rid of that final L there. So the dimensionless time really would be t times the square root of e over rho a. So it'll look like that. OK. And uh, that should be all we, oh, there's actually one more term. We still have the, uh, we still have the moment of inertia i. Uh, but we, we can leave that one in there because that's going to be part of our equation, and we'll, we'll, we don't, it's really these quantities, the y star, the x star, and the t star, 
that we want to form. We want to make those are the ver those are the quantities that are varying in our equation. So we want to make those dimensionless. So let's substitute these back into our original equation. So if you look at this for a second, to get y, what we need to do is the, the parameter y will be y star times the square root of a. To get x, it'll be x star times the square root of a. And to get t, t will be t star times the square root of rho a divided by e. And I'll substitute these back into our original equation right up here. So let me do that. I'm going to shrink this down so I can see the equation a little better. So rho times a times d squared, and then I'll substitute in for y, so it'll be y star times the square root of a, all over dt squared, so that'll be d t star square root of rho a over e, that whole thing squared, plus e times i times d to the fourth y, which is be y star over square root of a, all over d x to the fourth, so that'll be d x star square root of a raised to the fourth power is all equal to zero. So all I've done is just rewrite the equation here. This is just rewriting the equation using a dimensionless quantity times um, a quantity that gives that the, the, the original dimensional quantity the correct uh, dimensions. So it's just the same equation that we had previously, but I, I brought in these new variables, y star, x star, and t star, which are dimensionless quantities. Okay, so now we can simplify this equation a little bit further. When we take the derivatives of these things like this, this can come outside the derivative because it's just a constant. Right, so I'll have a rho times a times the square root of a. And then in the denominator, it's this square root of rho a over e, but that's squared. So I have to take that out as a rho a over e because it's been squared. Times d squared y star all over dt star squared. And then we do the same thing over on the next term. This will be square root of a in the numerator times d to the fourth y star. And then in the denominator, we have the square root of a to the fourth, so that'll be a squared that we pull outside, all over dx star to the fourth is equal to zero. And now let's go ahead and simplify these terms here. <clears throat> Excuse me. You'll see that a density drops out, an area drops out on that one. So I'm left with e square root of a all over rho. Oops, I'm sorry, the, I should have crossed out that rho. So let me erase that. So that should be e times the square root of a times d squared y star all over dt star squared. And then on this one, this the second term, you'll see that we have a square root of a in the numerator there and then an a squared in the denominator. So this will be e i all over, all over a to the three halves in the denominator. So times d fourth y star over dx star to the fourth equals zero. And then we'll do one more step. I'm going to go ahead and divide through by the e and the square root of a. So e times the square root of a. I'm just dividing the whole equation through by that. All I'm doing is just rearranging the terms at this point. So the first one becomes d squared y star over dt star squared plus, see the e cancels out, we'll get i over a squared times d to the fourth y star dx star to the fourth equals zero. And that's my final form for the differential equation. So that equation now should be dimensionless because we have, well certainly the first term is dimensionless because y star and t star are dimensionless. And here, y star and x star are dimensionless. And then if you look at this, i has dimensions of length to the fourth, area has length squared, but it's squared, so it's length to the fourth over length to the fourth. So this whole equation is now dimensionless. 
this i over a squared is just a geometric parameter you know describing the the beam so this is just a dimensionless dimensionless geometric parameter just describe it it has to do with the shape of the beam the cross sectional shape of the beam so that's the original equation up here but just made in a dimensionless form where the Dimensionless quantities are described right here. Let me highlight them so they stand out a little better. So there's the dimensionless y, dimensionless x, and dimensionless time. So as long as you make your, your y, x, and t dimensionless in this manner, this is what our new differential equation will look like. And of course, when you solve this, you'd have to apply boundary conditions that also are in dimensionless form. Now there's actually another way that we could make this equation dimensionless. It's not as, not as obvious, but if you played around with it for a while, if you used, you might stumble upon it, if you made x dimensionless using the moment of inertia raised to the one fourth power, so that'll be length over length, and you made y dimensionless using the square root of the area, so again length over length, and we made t dimensionless in the same way that we already did. So t times e over rho a. So if we make the, um, if we use these dimensionless quantities and substitute them in to our equation and simplify down, what you'll find that is that the different, in fact, you know what, let's go ahead and do that. Let's just work through it. This is a video, so if you don't want to see it, you don't have to watch it. And if you want to just see it a little bit faster, you can increase the speed of the video and you don't have to take as long. Okay, so now we've just rewritten our variables in terms of the dimensionless quantities and then how we made, the, made them dimensionless. And we substitute them back into the original differential equation. So the first term was, was like a row um, a times d squared y, which will now be dy star square root of a, all over dt squared. So I'm just following the same procedure that I did uh, just a little bit ago the first time through this. I'm just using different dimensionless quantities. Now we're going to work on the second term. Okay, so here we are so far, and then we'll go ahead and simplify this. So we'll have rho a square root of a in the numerator times rho a over e in the denominator, d squared y star over dt star squared plus e i square root of a divided by i times d to the fourth, y star, or dx star to the fourth, equals zero. And then we can simplify. You'll see this a divides out with that a. The rho divides out. Here the i divides out. And then I'll multiply by e, oops, e over square root of a both for both terms. Oops, I'm sorry, I should have done that the other way. I'll divide through by an e square root of a in both terms. The reason I did that is because I want to get rid of that square root of a and that e. So the first term is dimensionless, and you'll see that that actually works on the second one as well. So what we're left with now is our nicely simplified, little cleaner looking dimensionless governing equation. Looks like that. So it's just a, a different form of the differential equation. It's a little cleaner looking. So in this one, you just have to remember that our dimensionless quantities are defined a little differently than what we did for the first time through. So this equation down here uses the dimensionless quantities up here. Oops, there we are. 
they look similar. The only thing that's different is how the x quantity is made dimensionless. Actually, I've highlighted the wrong things. I should have highlighted these. Those are dimensionless quantities, the starred quantities. There, the magic of computers, I fixed it. So these are the dimensionless x, y, and t terms. The only one that looks a little different from the first way we did it is the x star term. The y star looks the same as what we did previously. T star looks the same. But by choosing the x star term in a different manner, it makes the, dim the dimensionless governing equation look a little cleaner. And then just a reminder up here, I highlighted the yellow dimensionless quantities here. That form, if I use those dimensionless quantities, then this is the form of the differential equation. It's still dimensionless. Both the, the yellow and the green equations still describe the same phenomenon. It's just that we made the variables dimensionless in different ways. Specifically, the x star is made dimensionless in a different way. It's still completely valid. So you could use either one if you were going to try to solve this differential equation. You could use either one and it would be totally fine. It's just uh, the second one's a little bit cleaner looking. All right, and just to describe what some of these quantities are, the y over square root of a, that's just a geometric parameter, right? It's just like geometry over kind of geometry. The y is really the displacement and it's made dimensionless by a geometric parameter. Same thing with the x star quantity there, as well as here, it's just kind of a geometric parameter. The time one is, is less obvious as to what that one's going to be. The, the square root of e over rho a, that's, uh, it's, it's kind of related to a, a speed of sound kind of quantity. Uh, it's not really obvious, but I know that um, one of the things that you would learn if you had a solid mechanics course is that the speed of sound in a, uh, a substance is like the elastic modulus over the density. So that the speed of sound is the speed at which a, a, a stress wave propagates. It's, it's, you can show that that would be the case. In fact, we might, um, when we get to compressible flows, we might talk about this uh, later in the course. And then, of course, t over the square root of a is kind of like a, a um, kind of like a velocity. It's like one over the velocity because this would be like a time over a length. So this is this is sort of like a um, let me erase that. This is kind of like one over a velocity. So this this is basically this expression here is related to two different velocities. One just related to the the movement of the um, of the beam itself, just kind of related to that velocity, and the other one is related to the speed of stress waves propagating through the material. In this course, you wouldn't be expected to know that sort of thing. I'm just giving this as a kind of extra bonus information, but that's that's what that quantity represents is something related to like the sp the speed of wave propagation within the beam. Okay. We'll go ahead and end it there. I think that the important thing for you to get out of this example is just using our dimensional analysis approach where we write out what the dimensions are of the variables. The ones that we want to make dimensionless are the ones that vary, the, like the y, the t, and the x. So we chose three repeating variables here, made our y, x, and t dimensionless using those quantities, plugged them back into our differential equation, and then just simplified. So then it becomes an expression that's dimensionless. So that's all we did. All right, we'll end it there.